Hi everyone, and welcome to the Business Legal Lifecycle podcast and TV show. My name is Jeremy Threaten, the founder of the Business Legal Lifecycle, and today uh, is the last show for March 2019. And in this show, I'm doing a replay of my interview with David Biddle. This was a really fun interview. David's got a really unique well way of selling businesses. So please enjoy this interview with David. Welcome to Business Legal Lifecycle TV, the live TV show all about the legal aspects of your business to help educate you on complex legal terms in an easy to understand manner, to help understand why you need to do certain things in your business from a legal point of view, and to help you develop a plan for the future. Our mission at Business Legal Lifecycle is to help empower all small to medium sized businesses around the world to get access to legal advice so that they can help build their communities and make the world a better place. Did you know that any business owner is on average seven months away from losing everything? That is the average time it takes from a successful business to fold when an aspect of their business is not set up correctly. Have you ever wanted to get legal advice but didn't understand what was going on? Do you feel like there is a divide between lawyers and their clients? Then this TV show is for you. It is all about empowering you and your business with the knowledge and tools to ensure that this doesn't happen to you. Business Legal Lifecycle TV delivers a twice weekly show focusing on the legal aspects of your business. At lunchtime on Mondays, we present Fast Fix Monday, a quick five to 10 minute show that will give you some actionable steps to consider for the week for your business. And at lunchtime on Wednesdays, we present our in-depth show of between 30 minutes and an hour, where we go through complicated legal aspects of your business in a simple to understand, plain English manner. And whether that is through educational pieces or interviews with experts in their fields. Afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Business Legal Lifecycle TV. Uh, today is Wednesday, and we're in March 2018, looking at uh, sale of uh, your business, uh, phase 13. Uh, so we're also, this is one of our episodes where we interview someone in the industry. Today, the person that Jeremy has interviewed uh, is a gentleman by the name of David Biddle. Now, David runs uh, brilliant businesses, which helps to sell, sell a business and has a, he's got a unique methodology and process to get the sale done. So he's a business exit specialist and he's also a licensed business agent. Uh, it was after he sold his own lifestyle business uh, called Smart Boating uh, via a website that he decided to go into partnership with uh, Deb Jeffries from uh, Brilliant Digital. Uh, and together they formed the Brilliant Group uh, and founded Brilliant Businesses as part of that to provide other successful business owners with an innovative alternative to the traditional uh, business broking uh, method. So Brilliant Businesses aims to make the whole process of business exit easy so you can enjoy a fast and profitable transition to your next adventure. So we're pretty excited to have uh, David uh, uh, on Business Legal Lifecycle TV. We know that he's got a lot to, lot to add. Uh, so, Jaron, do you want to touch on sort of the top three takeaways that you got from the interview with uh, David to share with the uh, viewers? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Craig. Well, the interview with David was a lot of fun. David's someone that we've known for some time, uh, and he's got a really unique way of selling businesses that I haven't seen before. And I, that's why I wanted to get him on to kind of go through his methodology. So the first one is is really the methodology that he and um, Deb have for their the business sales. It, it's really nice to see um, a professional put a methodology in place to really provide value for their clients. The second one is just the way they go about selling businesses. So you'll see that they use a lot of social media, a lot of the social media tactics that, that people use in business. They use a lot of that, that stuff and that's really cool. Um, and I thought too, the um, the stuff that I went through with, with him about the future and what's on next on the horizon was really interesting. So look, we go through quite a lot of topics uh, and we, we talk about you know the different processes in place. As always, there's a worksheet for today's episode, uh, which you'll find at businesslegallifecycle.com.au. Um, slash this is show um, 75 so 075 so please enjoy my interview with david Bitt. welcome david to business legal lifecycle tv and our podcast thank you for having me so let's um start about uh, about a bit about you and your business so can you give me a bit about your history and how you got into business sales Okay, well, um, as a youngster, I was always fascinated by business in general and, and particularly business efficiency. And uh, 
I guess like a lot of uh, a lot of people, my young, youngsters, when I went through school and uni, always on the lookout for ways to to make money. Mm. Um, so yeah, always dabbling in uh, in little sort of entrepreneurial uh, businesses, and that really suited, I guess, my sort of creative creative and innovative nature. Yeah. Um, sorry, I should have keep, I keep going. So uh, yeah, so so um, I grew up. So I, I grew up in the UK. Uh, my formal studies were going to uni and doing a, a degree in applied photography, film and TV, where I specialised in studio photography and uh, in, specifically in, uh, in the audiovisual industry. Mm. That actually led to uh, an amazing um, experience working in the live event production business. So um, initially I was working for another company and then I actually set up my own business right. um, over the next 15 or 16 years um, I had an amazing opportunity to work with some awesome clients to travel extensively around Europe predominantly and um, my responsibility was staging conferences roadshows product launches uh, for some fairly major blue chip corporates so they were companies that had some had some decent budgets believed in doing things properly um, and enabled us to to go out there and be very creative in the way we communicated their messages and launched their products. Cool. That was that was something that I you know I really loved it. Um, it was it was quite a high pressure job. Um, obviously, a deadline in a live event industry is is a deadline. There's no telling a thousand people waiting to walk through the door for an, to an auditorium that you're not quite ready and can they come back tomorrow? So deadlines were deadlines. So it was a, it was a nice combination of. Being creative, working really efficiently, being innovative, and uh, and I particularly enjoyed something that that delivered in an immediate, tangible outcome. Um, you know, and you could you could see the immediate uptake that the the, the, the delegates got and the company benefited from. I'm intrigued. Are there any specific examples of things that maybe didn't go so well and had to be solved in a in a quick time frame that you can say without you know, breaching any confidentiality? Um. It, uh, I guess a little bit ironic. We were actually responsible for doing the um, the UK London launch for IBM's Warp, okay. which was their rival at the time. This is going back in the nineties, and was their their rival at the time to Windows. So, um, although the event was very successful, the product literally failed failed to get off the ground. So that was uh, that was maybe not the most efficient launch we ever did, but through no fault of our own, I hasten to add. No worries. <laughs> So why did you so, so why did you get into this into the market of selling businesses? Okay, so um, having worked in the audiovisual industry for a number of years, I decided it was probably time for a lifestyle change. My uh, my kids were young, and as a family, we were looking for a bit of an adventure. So uh, back in two thousand and four, uh, we packed our bags and we moved the other side of the world. Came came to Australia, and um, I was looking for a real lifestyle change, and okay. the opportunity came up to buy a yacht charter company on Pittwater. Okay. Being an avid boaty and passionate, passionate about my sailing, um, for me it was an ideal opportunity to combine, you know, a hobby with a with a with what became an awesome lifestyle business to operate. Excellent. Um, I ran that for ten years, um, and it was through running that business that I met my now business partner Deb Jeffries. Um, she was a digital marketeer. Um, and I employed her services fairly early on in, in the time I owned the business to really start deploying a lot of digital marketing techniques to help help me grow the business and reach out to new markets. Um, and being you know, a relatively small boating destination, Pitwater obviously doesn't rival Sydney Harbour or particularly the Whit Sunday Islands, we actually managed to build a business that punched well above its weight in terms of exposure to the to leisure market customers and um, we built a very successful yacht charter business and then I also expanded that into a yacht syndication operation as well and mm. digital marketing and the websites and the booking systems and the whole digital platform we built were, were all instrumental in, in growing that business. Cool. cool. When, you, when, you when, you, when you said lifestyle, lifestyle change, is that um, the heat or and, as opposed to the cold or something else? <laughs> Oh, I think it's. Uh, I, I think for me, a lifestyle change was was doing something that I love. I mean, mm. for me, working on the water, introducing people to the sport of sailing, providing a, a number of different product offerings that enable people to get out on the water and, and just have an experience of you know some of the amazing waterways that Australia has to offer. Mm. Um, you know, 
why wouldn't you enjoy doing that as a job? It really doesn't seem like a job. So for me, it was a real lifestyle opportunity, which um, I seized with open open arms and ran that for 10 years and 10 very enjoyable years there were. So so that's about 2014. So then you're, yep. your next change into um, selling your own business. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what happened with that was, um, yeah, 10 years I felt I'd grown the business to where I wanted to wanted to grow it and I was ready for another change. Um, so I thought, right, it's time to sell. How, how am I going to sell this business? Well, to me, I guess the obvious approach was to, was to go online, Google business brokers and uh, find a couple of brokers that you know I thought could do a reasonable job and meet with them and then choose one of them. Mm-hmm. So I went through that process and I guess very quickly I became aware that most of the brokers that I that I talked to, there were, there were a number of, of, of things that I felt they were lacking. They they really didn't understand my business. It was a bit of a niche business. It was a, you know, it, it's not every day you get to sell a yacht charter company. Um, so they really they really lacked a bit of um, knowledge and detail as to the market in which I operated, yep. and therefore you could tell that they were struggling to kind of know which which database to go to, to who to reach out to, and try and find a buyer and, and therefore the uh, the enthusiasm to get me the best result was uh, was somewhat lacking yeah rather disappointingly for me they also sort of gave me a valuation that I was very disappointed with um, warned me that it might take at least a year to sell the business and to make matters worse sort of said oh and by the way we're going to charge you probably up to 10% of your sale price if we do find you a buyer mm. so being somebody who was pretty passionate, as I said before, about you know business efficiency and innovation, that whole package didn't sit particularly well with me. So Deb and I got our heads together and, and, and brainstormed some ideas. And seeing as we'd both witnessed the, the role that digital marketing had played in growing the business in the first place, to us it just seemed highly appropriate to use a digital solution for selling the business. Yep. So what we actually did was we built Another website, so that's completely separate from the business's day-to-day trading websites, mm. but a business, a, a website that was built with the sole purpose of marketing the business for sale. And to cut a very long story short, a combination of a great website, rich with really informative, appealing content, lots of, lots of pictures that would sort of make people think, oh, wow, that's the job for me. I, I could really fancy that. Um, we actually managed to sell the business in three months. From That was from advertising to money in the bank, new owners operating the business. And for me, it was a great outcome because I actually secured a, a, a purchase or sale price of double the broker's valuation. Wow. And also, really importantly, to two guys who bought the business between them who were absolutely ideal. They had the same... Um, you know, ethos as, as I did is to you know a great way of bringing people into the world of sailing yep. and they've expanded the business very successfully since I sold it to them and they really are you know a market leading business in that syndicate boat um, industry today excellent excellent well, that's that's good to know so um what have you found obviously you've been around for a while in doing business sales since 2014 what's the one thing that you find people get wrong about business sales most often Okay, for me, it it, you know it always comes really down to one one thing, and that's lack of preparation. Mm. Um, there are a lot of people that, and, and people people decide to sell business or, or come to the decision to sell a business for a whole variety of reasons. Sometimes it's something that's that's planned. Sometimes it's something that they just you know the circumstance means that they just have to sell it quickly. And sometimes it comes from you know maybe a, maybe an inquiry. Someone actually comes to them and offers to buy them, mm. but. The one thing that consistently is what either prevents the business owner taking their business to market or forces them to miss out on a great opportunity is lack of lack of preparation. Yeah. Um, and that comes in a number of ways. You know, they've got to be prepared with all their you know, financial figures a key. I'll, I'll continue to be amazed with the number of businesses that, you know, haven't filed accounts from two or three years ago and BAS returns and various other things mm. let alone not up to date with sort of monthly management accounts so that's that's a big issue that we come up against time and time again um and then also their preparation you know strategically they've got to be ready their company really should be operating 
lots of systems and processes in place so it's operating very effectively um everything needs to physically present well um you know there's no point in trying to sell a business where the vehicles look tired and the buildings looking tired or the warehouse mm -hmm. is looking a mess and disorganized so there's a whole heap of, heap of physical preparation that has to take place and, and on top of all that this vendor's got to be emotionally ready to sell as well mm -hmm. so there's a, there's a lot of boxes that need to be ticked and in fact we won't take a business to market until everything's prepared because otherwise it's just you know, it, it's a waste of everybody's time you know the deal's going to fall over as soon as someone starts looking at it in depth yeah I, yeah. I think that's I, definitely right. I think the preparation is is really the key for people and for businesses when they want to sell. And a lot of people don't don't really think about that, do they? And and it, and it can end up costing them a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and miss, missing opportunities. So, um, you know, it's very hard to to get an interested prospect back on the hook again if they've you know gone and seen something that they don't like. It's uh, you know more often than not that's it. You've just got one chance to make that initial great first impression mm, absolutely absolutely well i mean obviously you've got a lot of experience in the industry so how do you think that experience has helped you to do what you're doing now um so first of all i mean i, I think you have to be prepared that it, it is actually a, a very hard job to mm. to get the right buyer for a business so i'm particularly proud of the you know the passion and the hard work that i put into getting owners the best, not only the best price for the business, but also finding the right buyer for their business. A lot of people have spent a lot of time, money, blood, sweat and tears building up a successful business. And yes, of course, the money's important and, and they get the exit that they want. But I think it's also important from a, a pride point of view that they find a buyer who's going to look after the existing team, who's going to look after the customers and and basically create the next successful chapter in that business's story no one wants to sell a business and see it fail no. so i think it's important that you get the right buyer on board um so that you leave knowing that knowing that your legacies have been left in good hands i also really enjoy the challenge of thinking outside the box so you know being innovative making sure that we're going out with some really cool marketing connecting with the right prospects um if there are solutions that need to be found to, to roadblocks we encounter um, obviously just being strategic coming up with the, uh, the, the the right ways to work around those and basically get you know, buyer and sellers to a point where there's a deal on the table and it's it's got to be a win-win for all parties yep. um, I've been there done that I think that helps a lot um, and I do understand that selling a business for anyone is a big decision and you know I appreciate that when someone puts it gives me a business listing they're actually putting a lot of trust in me mm. um, and I want to be respectful of that and you know I'll work really hard to get a great result for every client that puts that trust in me for selling what to be honest is probably their most valuable asset in many cases so yeah absolutely absolutely well as, as I said as I said that's a, a nice segue into the next topic of selling a business so um, yeah, we mentioned in the introduction that you've got a methodology of five steps um, for uh, what you know how you, how you sell a business. So do you want to go through those five steps and maybe you know, just educate everyone about how you do things and how you do them differently with the innovative approach? Yeah, sure. Um, this, this has really come about with feedback from business owners. Um, the reality is most people only probably you know sell a business once or, or twice in their lives so it's something they're not doing on a day in day out basis and therefore it's something that in first when you first look at the process of selling a business it, it can be a little bit daunting you don't know who you need to help you you don't need you don't know where to start how long the process is going to take valuing a business is is, is a whole science in itself mm. so what we've tried to do is based on based on um, business owner feedback is put together an end-to-end -end approach. So we're really there to work alongside as a trusted partner and guide a vendor through the whole process of um, exiting their business. So where we start is when an owner has basically got their business ready for sale in terms of they've done the investment that they need, they've put their team in place, they've um, systemized their, their key processes there are a lot of business, uh, um, coaches and business um, businesses that will work with owners in sort of maybe the three or five years before they're ready to go to market to get them ready to, to go to sell. We don't compete with them. We really pick up where those guys take uh, leave off. 
to make sure that having invested all that time and effort and hard work to getting the business where it is, we then do the best possible job in marketing and finding the right buyer and getting them the financial outcome they deserve. Yep. So our process starts with, as I mentioned before, preparation is key. So we'll work with a business owner to make sure that all the preparation that's needed is done. So as I touched on before, that's physical, that's emotional, that's financial, that's logistical, that's structural, yep. making sure that accounts are all up to date. It's important that the account the accountants on board, any um, physical stuff that needs tidying up at factories or work premises or with vehicles or staff uniforms, all that sort of stuff is all taken care of. It's really important that when we get a prospect on the hook and we showcase the business to them, it the, the fewer issues they can see in it, the more likely they are to proceed through the sale yeah. process. So a lot of preparation up front. Mm -hmm. And for us, that also means, and from a, from a legal point of view, you'd be interested in this as well, Jeremy. <laughs> from a, a legal point of view, all the documents are uploaded to a data vault yes. on the websites that we build to market the businesses for sale. So what that does is it provides a central resource of everything from employee contracts to premises leases to vehicle registration documents to uh, GST returns to tax returns are all in one central vault so that yep. once we obviously after the appropriate non-disclosures uh, and pre-qualification have taken have been signed and pre-qualification has taken place we're able to give access to both the, the prospect and also their team of financial advisors and accountants to look at all the material to do a really thorough, comprehensive evaluation of a business. And, and can um, I just say, just, just on that, I think that's a really great resource for people to have. And it's something that's missed out a lot on is, is, is actually having all the documentation that can be provided. And what ends up happening, I see all too often, is that business owners, don't, you know, when they're selling a business, don't have that ready. And then it takes another six months to get the sale, you know, whilst, whilst accountants and bookkeepers, you know, go through materials, lawyers, draft documents, and all the rest of it. So I think that's really key to getting a quick, quick sale and making sure it's done correctly. Absolutely. Statistics show that a lot of business, business sales will fall over in the due diligence process. Mm. So at least by having everything prepared up front, we can, we can keep things moving through the process swiftly and efficiently yeah. and obviously minimize the chances of, of a deal falling off, off the rails. So I agree, that's really important. Mm. So that, that really covers stage one of our, our um, five-step process. Stage two is how we actually pitch the opportunity out to the marketplace. So because we, we, we come really from a marketing background, but specifically a digital marketing background, our approach is to build a bespoke website marketing the business for sale. So I stress this isn't their day-to-day -day operational website. This is a new website that will be probably only in existence and up on the internet for three or four months or however long it takes to attract the right buyer. So that website is its kind of selling the dream. It's, it's yeah. promoting this fantastic opportunity out to prospects. So it'll, it'll address things like, obviously, you know, the markets the business works in, the opportunities there are for expansion, the team that run it now, the lifestyle benefits the new owner's going to enjoy. Um, we, don't, we don't disclose financials in the publicly available part of the website specifically, but we can hint at the, 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 the bonuses and the benefits that are going to be uh, gained from running a business like this. Yep. So it's really engaging content. It typically has lots of really cool photography in it. Some businesses we sell, we need to do you know aerial stuff of a property or drone stuff of a uh, you know, it's a, a sporting type business. There might be some dr drone material that's shot. It's all material that's designed to engage somebody in as much as they can then put themselves in the position of being the owner of that business yeah. and and start to to start to live the dream and say, yeah, this is a business I'm interested in. This is something I'm going to inquire about. And, and on that, um, you know, you and I have talked about this before, but what do you get any um, resistance from business owners from putting all that information up on a web website? Or, or, is, or is your opinion that, well, they're just not the right client for me if they're not willing to have all that information up there? Like, how, how do you overcome that objection? And what should people be thinking about the benefits of doing that as opposed to, say, a traditional sale process? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a very good very good point, Jeremy. Um, our solution isn't suitable for everybody. There will be businesses that, for various reasons, have to go on the market confidentially. So there'll be, 
you know, typically B2B sales where they're making strategic approaches to other people yep. um, playing, uh, operating in, in the same market as them. But for the majority of businesses that approach us, our philosophy is very much, you know, you can't sell a secret. So if yes. you're really serious about selling and you want to go out there and attract the best possible interest and ultimately the best possible price, you've got to be prepared to put your, you know, business out there in the public domain for everyone to see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, but that's, that's very much the approach we take. What, what's really important and obviously what a lot of people do worry about is, you know, staff finding out in the right way, customers, suppliers finding out. So we also will work with a business owner to assist with that communication process, right. when to tell those people, how to tell them. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's vital that they hear from the business owner as a, as a sort of personalized approach yeah. as opposed to to come across the website the last thing you want is a staff member suddenly finding the business he works for is being sold and he's one of the last to know about it yeah that wouldn't be necessarily the best approach i think there's, there's most staff members would really not like that very much so so that's the yeah. first two is there anything else on pitch before we move on to the third one um well the, the, the pitch then is a nice segue into our, our third p of our 5p process which is to promote the opportunity now this is where our solution is fundamentally different and, and to the best of my knowledge, it's fairly unique the way that we are promoting businesses for sale. Rather than have a piece of marketing and, and I guess sitting back and waiting for someone to find that opportunity, we are very proactive in how we promote that business sale opportunity. So by that, I mean we identify types of people who we think might be interested in the business that we're marketing. Uh, and then we're very specific in placing predominantly Facebook, Google, and a little bit of LinkedIn marketing and advertising in the feeds of those particular people. So nowadays, particularly with Facebook, you can target by not only geography, by age, by job title, by interest groups. There's a whole realm of, informa of, of um, data that as marketeers we can tap into. Yep. Um, so, for example, let's supposing we were selling an animal-related business, mm. we might brainstorm that and think, okay, so people that might be interested in this could be a vet or a vet nurse or um, a breeder of some sort or someone who operates a pet shop or yep. you brainstorm a whole host of ideas and then we can specifically target those people yep. in their Facebook feeds yep. so that advertisements for the built business that we're selling with nice teaser text, appealing yep. photographs will stop them in their tracks as they're scrolling through their Facebook feeds and say, oh, yeah, that's interesting. I'm interested in animals. I'm going to click on this link and have a look at this business opportunity. And then all of a sudden they're on this website, which is a really cool piece of marketing. Mm. Um, mm. And we've had great success in attracting people to, to look at businesses that actually aren't actively in the market to buy a business. But you put the right opportunity in front of them at the right time, yep. it's like dangling yep. a carrot, and sooner or later, someone will buy. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And, and do, do you and like sit do down like, with the, the business owner and work out what an ideal buyer avatar or anything like that? Or like how do you determine exactly what, what that right buyer is? Yeah, I mean, clearly, clearly the business owner knows best about you know what attracted them to the business in the first place, why they've built it the way they built it so their input is invaluable but as marketeers we're also very good at sort of thinking outside the box and saying okay so here's a business that's in x market mm -hmm. who else outside of that might have similar interests and um you know similar buying behaviors um and again we as marketeers we can tap into all that so we we, we spread a fairly wide net but it's but it's it's a targeted net as well so people who you know, people, if you're selling a yachting business, you've obviously got to market that to people who have an interest in, you know, the ocean, yachting, yep. classes of boat, key yacht races, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. um, that, that's what we do. Cool. That sounds really good. Um, so what about the next stage? So the next stage is sort of once we've, once we've attracted a buyer, obviously it's a business, we're licensed business brokers. So we go through that whole process of, um, uh, buyer selection, working with them to find out, you know, who the serious potential buyers are. 
yep. Um, yep. feeding them information, and that comes off our website. We have two. We typically set up our uh, data vaults with two levels of access. Um, the first is uh, the business overview, or, or traditionally what would be called an IM. So that's giving all the financials um, overview of the business, and that's only disclosed once someone signed a non-disclosure agreement and they've been pre-approved. Yep. And then yep. when we get to the stage of you know more serious due diligence, maybe maybe an offer's on the table or someone's looking for an exclusivity period for reviewing the due diligence material, we've then also got all that stored in the cloud to provide provide them access to as well. So it's really sort of working with them, taking them through the process um, until ideally we have a, an acceptable offer on the table and a heads of agreement signed and then it's over to the legal team to pull it all together in terms of a, terms of a deal. Yep. Yep. Um, and then as and when things are ready for settlement, then uh, working with both parties just to facilitate that whole settlement process and get the uh, get the owner's money money in the bank for him and him out of the business. And so that's the um, the fifth step. The, um, proceed is that right? Proceed, so, that so right? we've gone through procure procuring our yep. our offer and then proceeding to, uh, to to facilitate the whole process to successful settlement. Excellent, excellent. Well, as, as we've talked about before, we're all about practical things as well um, and helping people get some ideas about what they need to do to sell the business. Because I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that at some time they're going to exit their business and that that people need to be live to that and they need to be live to the fact that they need to start having things ready. So what can, can you give some practical things that a business owner should start doing you know, today or in the next week to start setting their business up for sale so that that process can be sped up as much as possible? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, first of all, I'd preempt what I'm going to say by, you know, really, you should always be ready for sale. Yes. Um, if, if you set your business up so that it's always operating at maximum efficiency, everything's running smoothly, one, you're going to enjoy it more uh, while you're operating it, and two, if you get a knock on the door one day that's unexpected and someone wants to wants to buy the business, mm -hmm. basically, you, you kind of need to be ready to jump at a, jump at a great opportunity. So, um, ideal world, always be ready, but as you, as you work towards that ideal world, I guess mm -hmm. one of the main things that you need to do as a business owner is effectively make yourself redundant from your own business. Um, a lot of businesses, business owners suddenly find that when they go to market, the business is actually too dependent on them. They're the ones that are, are running everything on a day-to-day -day basis. They're the ones with the relationships with the clients and the suppliers and take them out of the equation and really you get left with an empty shell and it's, it's hard to sell an empty shell. So my, my best piece of advice would be make yourself redundant from your own business. Your own business should, should be able to operate while you're not there. Yeah. And if you've you know, been giving yourself regular holidays and you've been taking extended time out of the office to pursue other activities in the le in the years leading up to sale, you can be pretty confident that you've got a business that's that's running without you yeah. um, and it's a genuine business that's a sellable asset rather than just a job for yourself. So that would be my, my number one recommendation. Um, other things over and above that would be obviously systemize the business as much as possible and that's all going to help the business operating without you being part of it on a day-to-day -day basis. Really important to keep all your financials in order. There's no point in taking a business to market if you haven't got updated financials. It's the first thing any buyer is going to be asking to look at. So yep. um, having to say to them, oh, I'm waiting for my accountant. I should have last year's financial reports you know, ready in a month or two's time. That's just not going to cut it. You need to be 100% ready with all that and have up-to-date information if you're selling a business in you know this time of the year january february march it's no no good not having any up-to-date figures from the last annual accounts in at the end of june you've got to have year-to-date monthly accounts going forward i might be somewhat biased but i'm a big believer in having a very effective digital strategy in place a good digital strategy that's firing properly can be Continually, 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 quality leads to business. You have that. You have that. That's 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 very appealing to a buyer. buyer. Um, we've already talked about physical appearance of the, of the of the business. So that's as I said before, first impressions count. So try and make sure um, you've got all all your house in order as far as that's concerned. Fix up any issues. There's no point in going to market thinking that you know you're going to keep all that hidden. Yeah. An experienced savvy buyer is going to find them when they start. 
delving deep into the in, do, doing their due diligence on your business. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to have a good team around you. Um, selling a business is a is a stressful process. So if you've got a good team by your side, and by team I mean a broker, a lawyer, um, obviously your own your own accountant, and sometimes a mentor, a trusted mm-hmm. person that uh, that can be by your side just to bounce ideas off. Uh, can be useful too. Um, and finally, have a plan of what you're going to do once the sale is complete. That's important as well. Mm-hmm. I think uh, if you know the reason why you're selling and what 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 happens after the business is uh, handed to the new owner, that's going to help keep you motivated through the whole process. So they would be my top tips. Yeah, that's an interesting one, the last one about having a plan for what you're going to do afterwards. I, I've acted for a lot of business sellers and often they just think that they're going to go off and go on a holiday for the rest of their lives and they're back at work within about six months. Have you seen that happen quite often? Yeah, and that's purely because they, they their, their mind was focused on selling the business and they hadn't really stopped to think what they were going to do to replace that big part of their life afterwards. So, um, you know, there's lots of, lots of options that, that people go on to do, but I think it's just really important to have, a, have an idea as to what one or two of those options might be. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, are you able to give us any examples? If you don't want to reveal names, you don't need to. But um, can you give us some examples of how your unique approach has helped some businesses sell and what the rewards have been for those for those business owners? Yeah, so, I mean, I'll, I'll talk, talk about a couple of success stories. Um, we recently sold Wincraft. Now, Wincraft are uh, one of Australia's largest luxury yacht importers. They represent a number of key brands that they import predominantly from Europe and sell into Australia and New Zealand. Um, we took that business to market, implemented our five-step approach. Yep. Um, I used that as a good example because that was very much a lifestyle business. So the website was full of you know, great images of luxury yachts and people out on the water enjoying themselves in the beautiful Australian sunshine. Yeah. Showed the owner of that business enjoying Hamilton Island Race Week, competing in the Sydney Hobart Yacht Race, wow. cruising up the east coast of Australia with his family. So it was very aspirational. Mm. Um, and we promoted that, obviously, out to the yachting community, yeah. brainstormed people who we thought might be interested in that business. And our digital marketing activity, the ads that we put out there, um, reached over half a million um, viewers. Um, and that actually created nine and a half thousand visits to the website that we built for the purpose of selling that business. And those visitors resulted in 68 firm expressions of interest. A um, couple of key players sort of came to the front of, of that prospect list. And um, we managed to identify one that was ideally suited to the business in terms of his knowledge of the brands, you know, had existing knowledge of the brands that uh, the business represented was familiar with the sailing community um, in and around Sydney. And because all the information was was prepared up front, we were able to facilitate that deal five months from beginning to end. And that, I have to say, was over Christmas and New Year as well when a lot of the okay. banks and the lawyers were on holiday for a few weeks. Um, so five months from beginning of marketing to new owner on board in the business and the other owner money in the bank and moving on to his next venture. So... Those numbers are, are phenomenal in business broking terms. Mm-hmm. I mean, to have nine and a half thousand visits mm-hmm. to a website and sixty-eight expressions of interest in in a, in a short period of time, most traditional brokers would be, you know, delighted to get half of that in a year. Mm-hmm. So that was truly phenomenal results. Absolutely, absolutely. And then- um, another 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 example I can give you is a luxury uh, pet kennel uh, building for boarding facility up in the uh, up in the Hunter Valley. Um, similar story with that in terms of in terms of numbers. In fact we actually had significantly more inquiries, um, similar level of exposure, higher level of inquiries, some something like 178 written inquiries for that business. Um, the uh, animal loving population of Australia is huge, so that didn't come as a surprise. But um, <laughs> Because we had a lot of interest, we ran open days for that particular business. Oh, wow. um, had 35 separate parties come to an open day. So it was a bit like running a house auction, but for business sale. Uh, and again, soon we were able to identify a buyer for whom it was a very strategic purchase. Yep. Um, and therefore, 
they were prepared to pay a, a premium price and you know, that's another another benefit of a very focused marketing campaign that identifies the right buyer and gets the business owner the best possible outcome excellent excellent any other examples that you want to throw in there or is that those two those two are very um, show, show a lot of the value that you can provide but just just curious if there's any others yeah, I mean, what what we've what we've done more recently is we've, I mean, that, those are sort of the, the big businesses with multi million dollar um, price tags on them. What we've done more recently is we've we've produced a slightly scaled down approach, which is still based around you know heavy digital marketing, targeted advertising, but rather than building a complete website um, as a standalone entity, we've got um, specifically designed template pages on our own website yep. that showcase. Yep smaller businesses on a, on a slightly smaller scale. Yep. Um, so um, that, that you'll see being rolled out on our website over the next couple of months. And that just enables us to provide, provide our offering for businesses that might only be selling for you know, $300,000 and up as opposed to multi-million dollar price tags on them. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that's a, a great little, a great te- technique. And I mean, you can certainly show the results of, of you know, that, and how that works. So let's um, transition into the, into the future. So uh, you know, it's something I talk about a lot with my guests. Uh, there's a lot of talk around in all industries about disruption. Um, there's, you know, in every industry, there's disruption. What do you see the biggest challenges in the commercial business broking space over, say, the next five years? Okay, well, it's sort of no secret that uh, we've got a tsunami of baby boomers heading for retirement at the moment. So what that means is there's going to be a lot more businesses coming on the market in the next couple of years. Um, the, 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 the counters, so that's on the one hand is good news, lots of businesses coming on the market, but it also, the reality is there's less buyers out there uh, and buyers with more choice can be far more strategic and, and far more picky with what they're going to, what they're going to buy. So Yep. There is going to be a lot of competition in the in the business sales space, um, and the businesses that sell them get the right financial outcomes are going to be the ones that have really put the the hard work into building a sustainable business that's a that's a business on its own right and not dependent on one particular person mm. um, is ongoing involvement. So, um, yeah, the message is get ready for that competitive market and really make sure your positions is. But your business is positioned in the best possible possible way going forward. Yeah. Um, banks are also tightening up on lending a lot. I mean, that's something we're coming up again more and more and more. You can have a business that's fantastic, pipeline of you know forward orders, um, but if a bank perceives that for whatever reason as being a risk, because if in the event of a default, they might have to wait for a you know dogs to be bred or a product to be built and developed to see that money come back in, they won't lend against that because yeah. it's just put in a too risky basket for them. So um, you've got to be realistic with your expectations. Because banks are tightening up on lending, cash buyers are great news if you can secure a cash buyer for your business. Yep. But equally, cash buyers are really savvy. They know that their money as a cash buyer is, is worth a lot more. So they'll be the ones that are looking to drive a harder bargain and and, uh, and, and knock you down on price. Um, more and more vendors have to do some form of vendor finance on a, on a business deal as a result of the banks being reluctant to lend. So uh, a cash, cash buyer is worth their weight in gold. Yep. Um, so yeah, as I say, it, it is going to be competitive. Um, the good businesses will still sell, um, but the poorly operated ones or, or those that are in industries that are, in, that are themselves going to be disrupted they're going to struggle. So um, I guess a word of warning, if your retirement depends on a specific financial outcome from the sale of your business, you need to proceed very cautiously and, and you know, take, some, take some good advice and really put the right steps in place to maximize your chances of a successful sale. I think that's great advice. I think, yeah, um, you never know what might happen in the future. So don't make your retirement dependent upon the price that you get for your business. I think that that's probably a very poor strategy if you can avoid it. Absolutely. Yeah. So so what's next on the horizon for you? Um, so our sort of approach and, and, and our involvement in the business sales space is, is, I guess, still fairly new. We're still, still in our infancy as developing that business. But, you know, we've got some great results under our belt. Um, so our, our process is being 
recognised as being very innovative, very effective. We're getting good inquiries, really good inquiries from business owners, you know, wanting to engage with our process and for us to take their business to market. So we're really flattered by uh, by that level of interest and that trust that's being put in us. Um, so I guess my, my role is to really capitalise on, on that unique opportunity that we've got to personally build my own profile. Um, so I'm an influencer in that business exit space yep. and to establish brilliant businesses as a major player in the industry. Excellent. That's very good and a very good goal because, as you said before, there is a baby boomer tsunami of, of business exits coming. So we need we need to be ready for that going forward. So yeah, um, let, yeah. All right. So let's um, move over to the quick fire question. So you ready? You got four quick questions. Just give me the first thing that comes to mind. And we'll okay. Go. Yep. Yep. So what's the book that you're currently reading and why? Okay, uh, so the book that's uh, by the side of my bed at the mo- moment is a book called Legacy by James Kerr. Uh, it's all about the All Black rugby team, um, uh, basically what what makes them thrive, what makes them continually continue to be one of the most successful team teams in the world, and, and, and I guess what teamwork generally can teach us about the business of life and, and how we can all draw parallels from their success and implement that in our own business environment. Great fascinating answer. book. Yeah, fascinating. I've, I haven't read it myself, but I know quite a few people have and they, they everyone says that it's a fabulous book. Uh, so what about, of, of all the business books you've read, what do you think is one that every business owner should read? Uh, personally, one of the best ones that I've enjoyed reading a couple of times is, is Steve Jobs. I mean, the guy was was an inspirational genius in my eyes, and the tenacity and innovativeness, and you know all those other key qualities that he displayed time and time again, and, and continued to overcome adversity and setbacks, and the belief that he had that he could he could change the world. He's in, in my eyes one of the one of the very few people that have actually gone ahead and done that, and it's uh, it's a sad loss that he's not with us anymore. I, I would love to have seen. What uh, you know? What other what other things he would have brought to the twenty first century, given half a chance? Yeah, it is quite sad, isn't it? Um, so, third question: What is the number one thing that you see people get wrong in business? So, I asked you what people get wrong in business sales before, but this is more broadly in business in general. Oh, do you know, Jeremy? For me, it's the really simple stuff. It's not delivering on a promise. Yep. So many businesses just get the basics wrong. Yep. If they delivered on their promise just half the time they would put themselves in the top 10 to 15% of the businesses in this country. We're, we're just continually let down by people disappointing, promising the world and, and then just not delivering. So um, I reckon if you if you just get that really simple thing right, you're, you're halfway there to actually building a good business. Yeah, great answer. And finally, um, if you could give advice to your younger self, what would that advice be? Um, oh, be brave. Be always looking for challenges. Don't don't get comfortable in your environment, and you know, sit back and think, yeah, you know, this is my lot. For for me, it's always pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, looking for opportunities, taking on new challenges, uh, becoming a a better person today than I was yesterday. Um, and I think that just keeps everybody everybody fresh. It keeps the team around you inspired. Yep. Um, and it's uh. Oh, for me, it just enables you to get the get the most out of life outside of work as well as inside. Yep, absolutely. Great answer. Well, thank you very much. We'll go out of the quick fire. Um, and just I've got a couple more questions. Um, is there anything we've missed today that you think it's important that you want to get across as part of this uh, this interview? Um, I, I guess just from from a sort of a little little push from our own business is you know more than happy to just have a no obligation chat with anybody. Just sort of starting to think about that process of maybe I might be ready to go to go to market soon it's always good to start engaging with people and get opinions and um, you know we're more than happy to invest time and and just have a chat with somebody and uh, talk through any concerns they might have give a little bit of of advice as to what they need to consider Um, and if as a result of that then we can we can help list their business and obviously we'd be delighted to do that but certainly no obligation in those early stages. Absolutely. Well, that, that, that leads nicely into the last question is where can people reach you? Um, and especially if they want to discuss anything about, about today and, and, and what they, what, how you might be able to help their business. 
Yeah, I mean, best best way is to jump on our website. That'll give you a, a good overview of, of who we are and what we do. That's www.brilliantbusinesses.com.au. Uh, and on there, there are various methods of contacting us, telephone, inquiry form, booking an initial consultation call uh, can all be done most easily and effectively via the website. Excellent. Well, David, thank you very much for your time. I think that our listeners and our viewers would have got a lot of value out of today. So thank you very much for um, your time on Business Legal Lifecycle TV and our podcast. Thank you, Jeremy. Thoroughly enjoyed being part of the show. Thank you very much. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed that interview with David Biddle. As I said at the beginning, the, the three main things that I got out of that interview were you know, their unique methodology of selling businesses, their five-step plan that he went through. I thought that was really fascinating. Uh, it's something that I, I really enjoy seeing some sort of methodology in place because it helps give some context to what people are doing. The second one, uh, you know, as I said in the intro, was their uh, digital way and digital remarketing methodology of selling businesses. It's a great way to sell a business to a lifestyle business. And you can really see from the examples that he gave, the, the way that he uh, you know, is able to sell businesses and give people some real value uh, in the businesses. And you can see from just the results and the examples that he gave, really how that methodology really does work. And the final thing that I hope you got away from today is, is the future. Yeah, business sales is one of those areas that is starting to, to really blossom. Uh, we're going into a baby boomer tsunami, as they like to say, with lots of baby boomers uh, coming up to sell their businesses. Uh, so you need to be ready to, to get that ready uh, for the business. As I said at the beginning, uh, there's a worksheet, uh, businesslegallifecycle.com.au slash 075. And even if you're selling your business, uh, now, or even if you're selling the business in the future, I really encourage you to get that worksheet and go through some of the exercises that we put in there because you really need to be ready to sell um, your business at any time because who knows when something might happen to you. Craig, do you want to um, finish off? Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So that's it uh, for March 2018. I must correct myself uh, before I mentioned that we were talking about phase 13. We were not talking about phase 13, we were talking about phase 11. We're moving into phase 13 uh, in the next month, which is what, April 2018. Uh, so remember to like the video on Facebook or wherever you are obtaining the content. Uh, as always, there will be the show notes. That's businesslegallifecycle.com.au slash 075 for episode 75. Uh, so jump on there and get the notes. Uh, we know you would have got a lot out of the interview and we thank David again for joining us. Uh, so we'll be back on Monday in uh, April 2018 for the next episode of Business Legal Lifecycle TV. So as always, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you later. See you later.